regardless of the obstacles, regardless of the fears, regardless of the mountains, whatever it might be, it is possible. Just trust God and step out by faith. Amen? Amen. You know, God is doing wonders in our midst. There is another book that I would like to talk about. And this book was written by another mighty, powerful woman. And this is the name of encouragement for everybody. I'm going to ask Mama Margit to stand up. This is the book Mama Margit wrote. Please stand up. Please stand up. She, she is our mama. She is not finished yet. She is not done yet. That God can inspire her to write a book, a brief memoir of my life as an immigrant. That's what it is. I read it. Very inspiring, very amazing. Mama Margit, you are challenging us. God bless you so much. It's $20. We have them in the back. God bless you. Somebody said, God can do anything through me, regardless. Regardless. Regardless can be your age. Regardless can be your situation. God can do anything through you. People of God, stop sitting down, arise, and make something good. Do something in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Are you enjoying today? Yes. Praise God. Worship team, get ready. I'm calling on you soon here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'd like to give one more announcement. The Wednesday services, um, we have called it Keep the Fire Burning. If you're a person who would like to be fired up or catch the fire, or need prayer, or want to be a part of an atmosphere that is exuberant with the presence of God, where the waves are moving, the waters are not dormant, it will be a good place for you to come. That's what we'll be doing on Wednesday for a season until new order. Because we are on a new stage, we don't know where the Holy Ghost is leading, but we trust that he's leading us into a good place. So Wednesdays, fire power, come and let cry out together unto God and move the waters. Praise God. Uh, January the 27th, that is this Saturday coming, of course, there is the L Conference. There is a gathering of the women. Do I have some women in the house? <laughs> Praise the Lord. And you know who's going to be the speaker? My own wife. Praise the Lord. Pastor Nadia, she's landing here, and you're going to have an amazing time with her. She is fire up just like I am fire up. You know what? We don't waste time. We need to move this thing quicker. Hallelujah. I am excited. So it's at 3 p.m. Men, you're not welcome, okay? This is only for women. Praise God. And also we have um, our India mission. Hallelujah. And of course... At the end of the service, you need to pray for us and release us to go to India. We are taking off actually tomorrow, Monday, going to the country where Minister Mercy is originally from, the country of the 4,000 gods. That's where we want to go and talk to them, talk to them about the only. I say the only. You don't need two gods. You just want one and the right one. The one who has eyes who can see, and the one who has ears who can hear, and the one who has a mouth who can speak. Because all other God, they have ears, but they can hear, eyes they can see, mouth they can speak. They are all dead God. Our God is a living God. Hallelujah. We are going to proclaim him to them. Hallelujah. Praise God. We have also another fire, power, deep time coming on March the 2nd to the 4th. And this one, please, it's encounter. Somebody say encounter. This is what one of the wings that have revolutionized our life and revolutionized this church, people of God, all right? Encounter is coming, and uh, it will be March the 2nd to the 4th. We meet here on Friday. We share rides, and we take up. This time is going to be in Sylvan Lake. You want more information? People of God, I know what I'm talking about. I have been there. It touched me. It transformed me. Some of you have been to Encounter. Lift up your hand. Anyone who has been to Encounter at least once. All right? You see all these people? They have been to Encounter. You've never been to Encounter. That will be your opportunity. If you don't, uh, you never experienced the baptism of the Holy Ghost, this is an opportunity. If you have experienced it and you need some fire up, all right? You want to reconnect with God to a deeper level and be able to flow in the Holy Ghost without any confusion, 
where you come out healed, restore, that is the right place to go. And so I will really encourage you at the end of the service, talk to Pastor Shaka, Carl, Pastor Carl. Pastor Carl, stand up. This is the fireman. This guy is fired up. Please, I want you to talk to him and put your name on. Whatever is needed, we can help you to get there. We will do our best to get you there. It's for your benefits, and it will be just amazing. We've seen marriages being healed at the encounter. We've seen people's body being healed at the encounter. We've seen people being baptized and have a new experience with God as they never had before. We've seen depression being uplifted. We've seen people's life turn around completely. People who thought, I never felt God, you know, I, I never sensed his presence. We've seen people encounter God on a personal level, on a deep level, and things has never been the same in their life. Do I speak about some of you sitting here who have been there and I felt the touch of God? Hallelujah. Where you are taking to the dimensions of spiritual as pure as can go. Where you speak to God spirit to spirit and you begin to learn to hear his voice. I think everybody needs a touch of that. So please talk to Pastor Carl. It's in a beautiful place. It is different from, from where I used to take you. I think this church is going from grace, from glory to glory and from faith to faith. They are taking you in a more beautiful place. I think there is an air conditioning. In the other one where I took you, there was no air conditioning. So now you've been treated a little bit better. Talk to him at the end of the service. Don't let me remind you that it is for your benefit. We will make it happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Are you excited? Praise the Lord, because I am excited. Praise God. I'd like to just uh, project only one verse, and then I'm going to share a little bit. We're going to pray, and we're going to get the worship team on, and we're going to begin to move. We are in this season of revolution of grace. And brothers and sisters, this is the real deal. It's really revolution of grace. You heard it from anybody who came here. God will do in this year what will have been done in five years. I say one year for five years. That's a good deal. I, that's a good deal. Will you not take that deal? One year, five years? I take that deal because I'm not growing younger. I need an acceleration of God moving my life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I believe it. I speak it forth and God is doing it. You know, when you, you walk in that dimension of the revolution of grace, God begins to do things beyond even what you could think or imagine. You become, you become just like a, 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 not to say a puppet, but you become like God's hand is on you. You're like blinded. And it just guides you and things begin to happen. You never plan. You don't even know what's going to happen. That's what grace does. God has poured out his grace upon us so he can lead us in the right place at the right time, meeting the right people that can take us to the next level. That's what uh, Jeff just shared this morning. You know, you're connected with one who used to be your enemy, you understand? Now becoming your partner. Somebody shout revolution of grace. Revolution. That's what God does. He will take your enemy and make him the ladder that you can climb to get to your next level. I prophesy that for somebody right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's happening. You can't get where you want to go without somebody. Mary needed Elizabeth. Even though Mary carried greater than what Elizabeth carried. This is not about how big you are. God can use a little child to catapult you into your future. God can use somebody you never thought you would meet to catapult you in your future. You will be in the right place at the right time. Talking about that, let me testify. I was in Toronto. I went to do a, a, a TV thing with, uh, for a gentleman. And uh, I came back the next day and I was in this studio. And these guys arrived and they say, listen. There is this studio, uh, this uh, TV station in the United States. We want to try something new. We want to try something new. And you are right here. Um, will you be able to flow? Uh, you don't need time to go prepare. We'll just do it right now. I say, yeah, you're talking to the right guy in season and out of season. Somebody say, I hear you. He say, no, no, no. This is, we never done this. This is going to be a trial. Now, we are happy that it's Tuesday, it's not Saturday, because we cover about 36 million people around the world. So Saturday is our busiest time, but Tuesday, not a lot of people will be connected, so we can take a chance on you. I'm okay with it, take a chance on me. And because of grace, you will go more than taking a chance. You probably will look around to hire me. Are you hearing me? I say, yeah, I'm your man. Take a chance on me. I'm totally fine with it. You know what you call that? A watershed moment. Somebody say watershed moment. 
You are the right place at the right time, meeting the right people from the right door, the right opportunity, and you didn't think about it. You didn't plan it. Just because of grace, grace just moved you from Montreal to Toronto. At the same hour, at about the right time, you meet the right people. I pray today, in this year, God will lead you into a watershed moment where you will meet the right people at the right time for the right door and the right opportunity in Jesus' name. Yeah. So I climb up on this stage. The director in the U.S. is stressing. He said, who is this? He's a black boy. And his first language is French. Oh, my God. That doesn't look really good right now with this French thing. All right? I'm talking to English people. I said, all right. We're going to try out, but uh, I'm on the switch here. Anytime things don't go, you know, I just turn off this thing, all right? You have 28 minutes to do the show. This is 28 minutes, but at any time, I can remove it so it's not live anymore. All right? So you can record it. We don't want to offend anybody. You can record it, but it won't be. So go ahead. We went on. It's supposed to be 28 minutes. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. 28 minutes pass. The guy texts and says, don't stop. Let's continue. Hey, oh my God, let's continue. I mean, what a shared moment are phenomenal. And so, this man feel like, I need this guy on my TV station, man. I really need this guy on my TV station. I said, uh, me, you need me? Oh, yeah. I really need this guy on my TV station. It has to be. We're covering 36 million people. We need this guy. Have you ever recorded for TV stuff? And what? I said, no. I've been to a TV station a couple of times, but I've never done TV per se. He said, no, no, no. You are a material for. And you know, when grace comes on you, you become to be a material. I mean, are you hearing what I'm saying? When grace comes on you, you become a material. Somebody say, I am a material. You become the answer they have been looking for in the high places until the valley boy come out. And then because of grace, doors open in the name of Jesus Christ. Please send me all the video. I send them one of the videos we record here. He look at the quality. He said, this is excellent. I want you to send 10 videos. We're going to edit them. We're going to do an intro. And we're going we're to send them back to you. If you like it, we shoot it on our TV station. And we're gone. I want you to be recording now. I will pass you three times. And each time you'll pass, we'll pass it three times. I say, wow, three times, three times, that nine. That's the number of productivity and fruitfulness. Somebody is catching up. Are you hearing me, somebody? We're going to do in one year what we are supposed to do in five years. What a shared moment. Don't play with it. T.D. Jakes, years ago, walked into this Azusa place. They asked him to send CDs because of uh, uh, Seymour, who was a black man. So they give sometimes a lot of places and stages to the black preachers because of Seymour. And so they selected many of them, and in those one, T.D. Jakes, and it was not known, though it was so mighty. You know, sometimes you can be mighty and be hidden. Yeah. You can be smart and not be known. Yeah. And, and so he sent his tapes. Now, they, they put his CD on, and they put other people's CDs. When he was passing on the CD, the guy who was selecting to see who was going to be invited didn't like it. He was about to remove it. And of course, the gentleman who was in charge of the whole project has walked at that moment in the studio room where they were watching the video. And he heard just one word. And he said, who's this guy? The guy was about to say, no, no, he doesn't qualify to come here. But a higher authority spoke. Who's this guy? I'm here. He said, no, he's the guy who has uh, 300 people there somewhere in the corner. He said, no, 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 no. Put it back, put it back, put it back. He said, I want him. And not only I want him, I want him to be the main speaker. But he never been here before. You don't need to be there before. When grace come on you and a watershed moment, it is your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn. In the name of Jesus. When Jesus say yes, who can say no? If God lift you up, who can bring you down? Grace is powerful. I say grace is powerful. It overlook your credentials. It overlook your experiences. It put your experience aside and take over. That is the season in which we are. So whatever you are and whatever you do and wherever you are, expect what a shared moment. I'm prophesying now. 
I say expect water shed moment. In other words, the Holy Ghost will drag you to meet the right people that you need who have the right wisdom, the right resources to take you to your next level. Are you hearing me, somebody? I pray for water shed moment, for divine encounter, supernatural connection. It will open the way for you and open doors for you and put you on a higher stage in the name of Jesus Christ. When grace begins to function, all your capacity, it begins to humble itself. Grace has a way to humble your capacity. Seriously? Capacity to capacity. Somebody who never done a show? Seriously? Are they out of their mind? That's what grace does. Grace makes them be out of their mind. And they begin to give you things they will have never given to you. You understand? You remember the children of Israel? The Bible says, they had favor with the Egyptian taskmasters. In other words, the people used to abuse them before. The people used to whip them. The same people under grace turned their mind around and they have found favor with them. They begin to give them all the money of Egypt. That's what favor does. Your enemy begins to bless you. No. They bankrupt themselves so you can be loaded. There is a certain project you're working on right now. If you look at your paycheck to be able to do it, it will take you two lifetimes. But I prophesy today, no matter what you have in your account, trust God for what a shared moment for supernatural provision in the name of Jesus. The right partner shall come your way in Jesus' mighty name. Grace is terrible. Grace. One day the, the prophet decided under the commission of God, go and anoint a king for me in the house of Jesse. Hmm? And Samuel came to the house of Jesse. And Jesse pulled out his mighty seven children, the most powerful, from the eldest to the youngest, without the youngest, powerful. He said, this one are king material. King material in the eyes of man. Are you hearing me? They are, they are successful Success material. He pulled them, they all walk, and he said, No, not him. He said, No, not him. He said, No, not him. Prophet himself was confused. He said, ah, I don't get this anymore, God. I thought it was this guy. God said, Uh uh, it's not him. So finally, he asked a question. Do you want to know the question? Do you want to know the question? Is there still any other? Huh? Do you have any other son? Somebody said, That's a good question. Somebody is about to ask. After they have brought them all the engineers, after they have brought them all the curriculums, after they have brought them all the resume, after they have met all the employees they want to employ, they will ask, ah, ah, these ones are powerful. But I feel, is there any other resume you forgot somewhere? God is about to remember you. When man has not seen you, God has seen you. When men don't know you, God had known you. Men, men forgot about you. God remember you. Is there any other one left? He's talking about you. It is your time and it's your turn to be remembered in Jesus' name. And he turned to me and said, there is the little one who is no king material. <laughs> He's taking care of the sheep there in the backyard. They don't even let him to come and take a selfie picture with the prophet of the day. Is keeping the sheep there. You know what man neglect? You understand? What man despise? Some of you, you were labeled the black sheep of your family. But I'm telling you, you thought you've done well. Am I right? You ain't seen nothing yet. God will still bless you to blow their mind. They will know a black sheep in the eyes of man is a material to be a king over a nation. Are you hearing me, somebody? Don't let people despise you. Under grace, all things are possible. You can come from the bottom and find yourself be the top. You understand? Your neighbor can be dying in famine and you, you will be giving him food. That's what God does when you enter the realm of this supernatural atmosphere under which God has 
pull you and I to walk in. This is a supernatural atmosphere. You need to connect, brother and sister. Connect to God. You need to have this umbrella. You need to have this covering of this revolution of grace. And let it begin to shift your life around. And move you into places you will have never dared to go. Even in your best time, you could have never thought that you could go there. Because God is no respecter of a person. And all things are possible to those who believe. Do I have a believer in the house today? I said, do I have a believer in the house? I feel prophetically in my spirit right now. Just somebody just like Anna. You know Anna? She was so special and her husband loved her. But something was close. In her case was the womb. Probably in your case maybe something. In other words, something was closed for Anna, so there was no baby or generation. You know, in those days, you don't have children, you're not being remembered. It was pertaining to her life, but pertaining also to the legacy of her life and the generation to come. Something was closed. Probably tonight, this morning, something is closed. You feel like you are pushing against the wall, something is closed. Nothing is moving. But here's what happened. Anna mean grace. Anna went to Shiloh every year without giving up. God said, you've been faithful. Even though it was close, you still kept worshiping me. In the same way, Anna, even when it was close, still going to Shiloh until that day. I say until that day. And that day might be your day. That day might be your day. She went to Shiloh the same day she went. The same way she went in the course of the years. Every year look alike until one day. The prophet said, go home, it shall be so. She went home and the door opened. I prophesied today. No matter how long that door has been op- uh, closed. No matter how fortified it has been. In the same way God did for Anna, I prophesy today that you've been faithful to God. You've been worshiping him regardless. And today, God has remembered you. I command as Eli commanded that that door shall be opened in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That you will become fruitful in all those areas pertaining to your life and to the generation to come. In Jesus' name, receive it with amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Worship team, come on the stage as I'm closing. As we are worshiping, we'll give our offerings to God. Our generous offering out of the heart of gratitude. I want we take some time and praise the Lord today. Because of the grace revolution, I don't want you to miss this. It's like a rain falling. And everybody has their portion. Are you understanding? When grace comes, all things become possible. Everything begins to move smoothly. God begins to intervene in places where you will have never thought he will intervene. That's what I'm believing for you. And that's what I believe for myself and my family and this church and all other churches that we lead. So at the end of the day, take it in. Make it your own. In Jesus' name. Stand up on your feet right now, church. Give to the Lord. Take an envelope. You need an envelope. Take an envelope. You need a machine. You can go in the back and uh, give to the Lord. Hallelujah. He is generous. Give him a generous gift. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's start with uh, we bow down and worship, and we pick it up into a praise. Hallelujah. Let go blue, and then we go red. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Those who are here tomorrow, yesterday, you understand what this means. We are talking about coded now. Those who are not here, interpretation. Hallelujah. Watch what's going to happen. You will understand. God bless you.